know that it's all about mind games the way Jurgen Klopp is really bridging up this game the way he's talking about how he is afraid of Arsenal and he's hoping that Enfield will be on his side and he's asking Enfield to actually stand for him and actually try to make the atmosphere as vocal as it can be because of course we know that Mikel Arteta's team is an emotional team so usually they find themselves struggle whenever the atmosphere is too hostile to them maybe they have changed maybe they have grown matured remember now they've got a Declan Rice they have Kai Havertz and they have a you know that goalkeeper that they are calling David Rea so there is a lot of things to build up into this game so I'm gonna start this video by saying hello guys welcome back to another video this is the football connect Merry Christmas to those people who are watching because the next, second time we do this podcast it will be after christmas or maybe it'll be like christmas day i'm not really sure but at this moment as we are here we are all trying that means to get the game rolling and we are excited over what's going to be happening we want to hear your thoughts in the comment section do me a favor click the like button subscribe to the connect as we build up to the premier league this week as it's week 18 manchester city not playing because they're in the club world cup so that is the only team that you're not going to see us talk about in this podcast because you know they are trying to achieve something way much different than the league you know this season as you can see they are not really focused on the league they they have so many things to deal with so i want to hear your thoughts in the comment section are you excited about the league what are you expecting to see and what's gonna happen as the league goes and continues to be honest there's a lot of things that is happening but the big game again like last week we are gonna be Prevailing Liverpool versus Arsenal as it looks like it is the team that game that is going to take the grand stage of all and a lot of things could happen Liverpool could lose Arsenal could win or they could draw then Aston Villa finishes on top of Christmas there's always something that people expect when it comes to teams finishing on top of the Christmas as they're always believed that usually they're the team that wins the league but not Liverpool in the past two seasons or that they've had under Klopp no, no, in fact, not one under Klopp, then one under Brendan Rogers, if I'm not mistaken. Then also for us now, yeah, last season after they just crumbled, and also people talk about Enfield being the ground that destroyed them in April and they never recovered from it, and that's how Man City managed to win the league. So, all of these things is all part of the games, and they're building up to try to give this hostile environment, try to talk about how important this game but we have to also face facts the last time arsenal beat liverpool at enfield was actually in 2012 so it means if they win this game it means it took them almost around 11 years for them to get their first victory at enfield that tells you so much you 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 can't you can't spend a decade without winning at a particular ground and just expect things to change especially you could not even beat the team when they were at their terrible form last season i feel like when we talk about last season this season this season is that liverpool are actually playing like a team that has something to do to win or actually to achieve at the end of the day so there is a lot of things that has changed so let me know your thoughts in the comment section are you excited over the games and which team do you think has the upper hand is it liverpool and they are 12 men enfield or is it us now and you know they are ever winning team because one thing that we have to talk about is this when they've gone to the grounds which they are hostile to them and they're supposed to win they've always failed aston villa they did not win newcastle they did not win all of those games they lost so they need even luton town there to score a last minute goal it was a hostile environment for them so they need to step up to show that they can do something in these games i was watching forever is it is it forever our is it forever us now the invincible podcast with john robbie lee gun lee it was a gunner lee and the, some the people with i'm not really sure if i'm making mistakes but um, i was watching those guys and it also it almost felt like liverpool we have already lost in this game which is a little bit weird to be honest to feel like you have lost it because of how people are prevailing the game so it's gonna be an exciting fixture that's for sure and i cannot wait to see what happens but before we 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 talk more about the game in fact let me just talk about the game talk about what we're expecting and what could happen and how liverpool would set up 
hearts now we already know how they set up but it's gonna be exciting because there's somebody who said something that was exciting and interesting when i heard people talking about privilege to this game they said that liverpool have what arsenal wants but not what and also arsenal has what liverpool needs but you see they said liverpool have something that arsenal needs as well as arsenal have something liverpool needs but uh, you can tell that they're at the same fair at the fair level ground when you look at how the teams look like because the person was saying that arsenal would, would really die to have a keeper like allison somebody who they know that no matter what he will protect the team and he will protect that uh, that back line and as well as Liverpool, Arsenal knows that Liverpool would die to have a Declan Rice in their team. They want a DM, somebody who can command, and with the Declan Rice, it is a new team, a different team that can actually go for go forward than where they are at this moment. Which I have to agree because you also see that in the middle of the pack, Liverpool could be the weakest in this game, while Arsenal are the strongest. But as well, front going forward, Liverpool could be strong if they the strike force really turn up and actually do something. Could be strong going forward. Well, Arsenal needs to find their formation or their form to get something in the game. So it's gonna be an exciting one. It has so much. It is. It's really, really, really showing that it's gonna be one game that so many people are gonna be talking about. It's gonna give us that, you know, that feeling that you know any team that goes out with a victory there is actually gonna be the team to watch when it comes to winning the Premier League because if they keep wasting chances like they're doing if they keep wasting time and not taking their advantage both Arsenal and Liverpool Man City are just a, a Kevin De Bruyne away from coming back to their level best and as we can see Kevin De Bruyne is back so that could be a different time that could be a different Man City that we're about to watch after they come back from the Club World Cup, which I'm sure that they're gonna win. They're playing today with Flynn Wales, if I'm not mistaken. It's gonna be exciting to see what's gonna happen. But let me know your thoughts in the comment section. What are you expecting from this game, and who will have the upper hand? To be honest, because yeah, it looks like it's gonna be a challenging game. I'm I'm for sure about that. Of course, when we try to do a combined eleven, a go I have to say Allison. I think he beats both Raya or Ramsdale in this team. Then. At the right back, I have to say Trent Alexander Arnold over, um, you know, Ben David. What, what do they, what do they call him? What's, what's that guy's name? Ben White. Yeah, I feel like Trent Alexander Arnold offers more than what he does going forward as well, even a little in defensive. Then in the middle, we'll I'll choose Saliba and Virgil Van Dijk. I feel like Saliba has really proven himself. Imagine if he was at Liverpool playing next to Virgil Van Dijk, that could have been exciting. Then it's right, it left back. It's only Zinchenko and Simikas because Trent Robertson is injured. And between the two, I'll actually have to choose Zinchenko because I feel like Andy Robertson. I feel like it's me because as much as being good, it's not really that good. We still feel like we're lacking so much, but I'm telling you, that's for sure. I'm telling you, imagine if this guy was fit. It just imagine if Andy Robertson was fit for this game. It was gonna be exciting. In the middle in the midfield, of course, DM we have to say De Declan Rice. I feel like he has ended over Wataru Endu or even whoever will be there. Wataru Endu, it looks like he for me stands alongside him i will actually have to choose um odegaard over um i think at the moment is ryan gravenberg as much as he's trying to prove himself he has not yet come to the level of the likes of odegaard they look like they're exciting to watch and they can do more as well as on the left we will also choose dominic soberslay on the other side i feel like the midfield of Declan rice dominic soberslay and odegaard it's one of the strongest to actually have in any team and it's gonna be exciting to see how that one plays out strike force as we go forward salah and saka i'm choosing salah all day long because the stats prove them for themselves he has done it at a higher level and he just had to man up to go up a little bit up a bit and between you know gabriel jesus and gakpo because now i'm hearing that the owners will be playing at the left who do i choose there or oh, maybe let me just say because this is mine, I might actually say that maybe Darwin Nunes goes up forward as the striker and on the other side we have to choose Martinelli over 
Luis Diaz. Luis Diaz has not really been that impressive this season. As much as even Martinale has not been that, but uh, the two of them who's offering more, I have to say Martinale at the moment because Luis Diaz has to up his game. Then the manager left to be again club because Mikel I think he's still a rookie, he's still learning so much. That's my combined level. I want to hear your thoughts in the comment section. As we move forward with the prediction, what am I expecting? So, like I told you, so many Gunners are talking about how they're going to beat Liverpool in 2023. They are going to prove that they can. Like I'm telling you, I was watching AFTV. I felt already like we had already lost the game, to be honest. I actually felt like we had already lost the game. But my prediction is going to be interesting. I think Liverpool are going to win this game by three goals to one. I feel like I feel like if we play do, uh, down in the left where he played, I think he will cause problems at that side, which might force Saliba to try to go help out. If Cody Gagpo is going to be in the center, it was going to be interesting. And I just don't know what's going to happen between Zincheco and, and Salah. That one's going to be an interesting matchup that we're going to be watching. So I feel like it's going to be exciting. Trent Alexander, I know it's going to be important in this one, especially hitting those goals, shots up forward to try to help Liverpool with a good counter-attack and actually do something. So my prediction is Liverpool 3, as not 1. As we move forward, Christoph Palace played Brentford and it ended the 1-1 in David Moy. It looks like Roy Hudson is really happy. He's talking about it. The two teams has come from Liverpool and Man City, which has dropped the one and actually lost to other one. But one can say that he should have also won't get something against Liverpool. If it wasn't because of the officials, it could have been a different game. Aston Villa playing Sheffield tonight and it's gonna be an exciting game that's for sure I don't know how it's gonna go like but I feel like Aston Villa wins this game and they go to the top of the Premier League so that if Arsenal and Liverpool don't do something there's gonna be a, it's gonna be a switch up the the top of the league so I'll be excited to see that one going like I said I feel like Aston Villa will win this game by three goals to nil. Man City versus Brentford, that one has been postponed. Like I said, Man City are playing the Club World Cup. Watch them today. There could be the new World, uh, like Club World Cup in the, of the, you know, of the team or whatever you're going to be calling it. Like West Ham are playing against Manchester United early in the morning at 12.30 on Saturday, which is going to be exciting, which is tomorrow. I can't wait to see how this game plays out. But I'm excited, that's for sure. I'm telling you, I'm really, really, really excited over this game. I feel like West Ham will win this one, especially after their embarrassment that they got against Liverpool. They need to rise big. They need to show so much. This December and the Hammers are not happy. So David Moyes will have to actually up his game. Manchester United, of course, what they did against Liverpool was effective. And, you know, so many people have to be proud of them. But that cannot continue going forward. They have to actually start doing something that is exciting. But if we don't see it, it's going to be interesting to see how that one plays out. Um, The other one, so my prediction is West Ham 2, Manchester United 1. Yeah. Tottenham Hotspur is host Everton. And trust me, this is going to be a good game. Especially that they're missing so many players like Odoji out, Besuma out. That is going to be an interesting Tottenham Hotspur. Remember, they still have injuries in there. I don't know. I feel like Everton might win this one. 1-0 one or 2-0 at, at Tottenham Hotspurs. I feel like they have more of the people. Or 2-1, I think. Son might score or maybe might assist it to Richarlison. So I feel like Everton is the upper hand in this one. Nottingham Forest versus Bournemouth. An interesting matchup. Nottingham Forest with a new manager. They sacked, Gary, they sacked their manager. So now they have a new ma a new manager. It's going to be exciting to see how the game will play out. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section. I actually think that looking at this game, Bournemouth will win by two goals to one. They always have the upper hand. Dominic so Solanke is playing really, really good. Looks like he's enjoying his football again. So I think they'll get this one. Fulham are playing against the Burnley. A good game. Trust me, indeed, to watch. But I see nothing but a Fulham win as they have been doing so well. Of course, Ryan Jimenez won't be out because he got himself a sent off. But I see them win this game maybe by two goals or three goals to one. To see. Luton are playing Newcastle. Luton have really shown that they have something to prove but also Newcastle have well 
not being impressive to be honest so i can't wait to see look this is gonna be an emotional game for them as they come back their captain of course is not recovering at home so it's an emotional game they might want to perform for him they might actually dedicate this game for him so tomorrow newcastle has to be on their high they're making so many mistakes and you can tell that they are tired if they cannot perform in this game it's gonna be exciting i, I feel like Luton might actually surprise the world and actually win this game by one go to nil Liverpool are hosting us now. Like I talked about it, go watch the first part of this video. Uh, I'm actually going to try to predict the team that club is going to pick. I don't know if there's an Arsenal fan, you can let me know in the comment section which team you, you think your manager you, 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 you pick for this game. I feel like Alisson will be the golf course. Trent Alexander, Arnold Konate, and Virgil van Dijk. We have uh, Konstantin Semikas on the other side. In the midfield, it will be Wataru Endo, who holds as the DM. Alongside him, it will be Dominic Sobosla and Karis Jones. I feel like, of course, Ryan Graven, but he's still recovering. But I feel like that will be his midfield. Up forward, we will have Nunes playing at the, at the winger. We have um, Cody Gakpo playing in the middle. Then we have Salah playing on the other side. So that's how my team will look like. Can't wait to see what's going to happen with that one. So let me know your thoughts in the comment section over that one. Uh, Wolves versus Chelsea. A good game, a good matchup. Wolves could surprise Chelsea here. Chelsea are a team that is always struggle with a team that is a low block. And uh, Neto is back. And when Neto is back, it means that the speed is increasing for this Wolves team. I feel like it's going to be a 2-1 win to Wolves. Not taking anything from this team. So that is the last game of the week. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section. Are you excited? Which team do you think has the upper hand? Which team is winning? Before we go far or go anyway, we're going to talk about the Super League. So yesterday, the court of ruled in the favor of the European Super League so that they are allowed to do whatever they can do. They felt like whatever, new, uh, whatever FIFA and the UEFA did, they actually ruled against their own power. So they took the power into their own hands and they, did, they just did the ruling. So FIFA, uh, so the courts are not agreeing with them. So it means the European Super League is now allowed to go through. But the, exciting, the interesting part is this. They are looking for the, some teams that can come and make this one go well. They need, I do feel like they need to have a player, for example, like, they need to have teams like of the Premier League teams to make this one so strong, actually to do something. But it looks like it's going to be impossible when you think about it because the main teams are really, really refusing. They're coming out and actually going against the Super League. There are already so many teams or so many teams that have rejected them. PSG being one of them, Bayern Munich being one of them. Uh, we have seen Man City and Manchester United and Chelsea and Tottenham Hotspur coming out in the Premier League. The Premier League as a whole actually came out and actually regret so uh, and reject. So it looks like there is so much that's gonna be happening in this one. I feel like they're gonna struggle. They need these big teams. They need these big teams for them to get something. They need these big teams, and if the big teams continues to reject. It's not gonna look good for them it's gonna be vibe fc it's gonna be irritating so i don't know let's keep an eye to this super league people let's see what's gonna happen if there's gonna be any change but at this moment it looks like it's failing i'm just gonna give you a list right now of the teams that they've already rejected and the team that looks like they've already accepted so we're here we're here at the moment real madrid and the, uh those ones are the ones who are still running this show Arsenal also have come out and said that they reject the Super League. I don't know how true is that. It's interesting how these guys are talking about the Super League, but they are talking while standing in front of the Champions League trophies. It's crazy. It's really crazy how they're doing it. Uh, Olympus have also are keen to join, and Marcel are keen to join this one. So you can tell that the other teams are trying to do this for many reasons, but most of the teams are rejecting. They need... To have an estimation number of these teams they need big teams the premier league being one of them because they know that the premier league always brings so many eyes into this competition they'll bring so many eyes into the competition and it will look so much and way way much different from this but at this moment there is so much uh, so here yeah sorry i was moving to check 
the the teams that have rejected. So the team of uh, of that has already rejected the play, the team that have rejected Manchester United, Man City, Tottenham Hotspur, Chelsea, Celtic, Porto, Sevilla, Villarreal, Atlético Madrid, Real Sociedad, Kazakh, Levante, Bayard, Granada, Villarreal, Bayern Munich, Dortmund, PSG. Uh, let's see. PSG, Monaco, Inter, Roma, Atalanta, and Fairhood, they've all rejected the Super League. So most of the big teams are already there and saying, nope, they're not doing so. Liverpool have not come out, but they've already made it clear that they're sticking to what they've said. So that looks like, at this moment, the belief that they're going to make the Super League a reality looks like it's still hanging in the balance. So we'll find out more into that. I'll do my thoughts on it as well. I'll do a reaction video. I want to hear your thoughts in the comment section over that one. Click the like button. Subscribe to the Connect. I'm out. Peace. Merry Christmas to everybody.